Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to be covering some tips on cut lines and then along the way, I'll just be throwing in some useful tips for you guys, just extra bonus stuff. Uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, my name is Jay Rabbit. So just starting off, uh, I've imported a sticker or label that I made and I downloaded it as a PNG and have uploaded it into Flexi Designer Versa Studio Edition. So the first thing I'm going to do with this uh, label here is to add a cut contour line to it. So just click on it, effects, cut contour, and then I'm going to put a 0 0.03 inch contour on there and just click the check mark. Then I'll go up to File uh, to Export. And then I'll save it. I'll save it as an Adobe PDF. And then I'll open up VersaWorks, go to File, Add Job to Queue. Click on the file I just created and go to open. The first tip that I want to show you guys is once you go into the job settings, go down to cut controls and then go up to operation mode and just go to cut only. So this is a way that you can check your cut lines to make sure that they came over into VersaWorks correctly. So now if you notice my cut line is not all the way around the label. But you can clearly see here in Flexi Designer that I have the cut line or the contour line all the way around my label. So that's a way that you can double check your, your contour lines to make sure that they came over correctly. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys how to correct this. Now I don't know what exactly is causing this. I make most of my labels and stickers in Kittle. And this doesn't happen with all of them, just some of them. So the solution that I found for this is go up to file and export and instead of saving it as an Adobe PDF file you want to save it as an EPS so an encapsulated postscript file. So you want to name your file and then save it. Now I'm going to erase this here, delete it, and bring in the new file that I made saved as an EPS. Okay, so now I'm going to go to, to job settings, go to cut controls, and when I go to cut only, now you see that the cut line is all the way around my label. Some people have, have uh, wondered about this blue line that goes around it. I'm not exactly sure what this blue line represents, but it's not anything to be concerned about. 
because it's not a cut line. So, I mean, I haven't ran into any problems with it. This space right here. So I, I wouldn't worry about it. If I come across it causing a problem one day, then I'll be sure to let you guys know. So one other thing that I do want to point out though, when working with EPS files, is that you're going to want to set up your queue settings. And in order to set up your queue settings for a queue, it does have to be an empty queue. Okay, so you can't have any jobs sitting in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with QB. If I go up to edit queue settings and go to QB, under file format, up here at the very top it says EPS margin. And that's going to control how far out it reads an EPS files um, contour lines or cut lines. So I have mine in millimeters. If you have yours in inches, then just set this amount here to whatever your usual maximum is for for your contour lines or your or your perf cuts. I usually don't go over two millimeters, maybe three millimeters. So for me, I'm just gonna set it at five millimeters. And then another thing when it comes to these Q settings also, if you're if you're gonna be doing or specializing in one or two things, then I would rec highly recommend that you guys set up your Q properties and have it specifically for one product. So if you're doing a lot of stickers that you're you're laminating and you know printing, laminating, and then cutting afterwards, then I would strongly uh, suggest you guys to set up one queue uh, for your stickers that you laminate and cut. That way every time that you do a, a sticker job you don't have to go through and and set up all your information in the file. So you could go up the quality and find a your go-to uh, like sticker vinyl that you like using. Download the print profiles for it and add them to your list here. So for me, I do matte calendared vinyl, and then I usually just print at standard. So set your 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 vinyl your media type right here, whatever quality you like printing at. Down here, your color management. You know whatever your favorite is: True Rich Color, um, Sign and Display. You know, set that up. You can put your crop marks for the entire area or however you want to set it up. And then that way you don't have to keep doing that every single time that you uh, enter, put a job into this queue. It'll have those already set and then you can always go back and, and change anything that you need to change. But for the most part, it'll just be set up with crop marks and all that and then you can just save it. So it'll say the printing settings, the print, printing settings for the queue properties have been changed. Save printing settings, and you would just click yes. It'll save all of those settings that you've put for it. And then what you can also do is come up here and click on the letter and a little pencil pen, and you can rename it to whatever you're doing. So if I'm just going to put stickers, and then maybe I can just put Matt. If I want to have one for Matt and one for uh, gloss final just hit OK and then so now my Q setting is sticker matte so anytime I get a, an order for matte stickers I just put them into my queue and it's the print file is pretty much set you know maybe just go through double check everything and then you send it to, to print and that'll cut down on your production time and you can always go back and uh, change the queue settings if you want and and the name. Okay, everyone. That's going to be it for this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, like and subscribe. Share the video. If you have any more video suggestions, 
just let me know down in the comments and I'll do what I can to help everyone out. Thank you, everybody.